right, this is uh, part two of how to integrate BlackBot with G Suite. Uh, the first video I just looked at attaching uh, documents from Google Drive. Now I'm going to look at using Google Assignments. So you might be asking, Google Classroom? No, Google Assignments and Google Classroom are different. Um, think of it like this. If you were to remove everything from Google Classroom, except for the ability to post work, grade work, and give feedback, that is Google Assignments. The idea here is that some schools want to use a system like BlackBot to organize their information, to use uh, different types of calendars, and to um, maintain courses that can roll over year to year. I'm not certain if people are aware of it, rolling Google Classroom content over isn't as easy as it is in things like PowerSchool, BlackBot, etc. Those systems are designed to create a historical snapshot and then let you take what you've made and push it into the next academic year so you're not always redoing all of your work. Um, I think a good rule of thumb is that any course that's running probably should revise 20 to 30 percent of the resources and topics every year, but you know, around 70 to 80 percent stay the same until there's a massive curriculum change. Most schools do a curriculum review every three to five years, so you don't really want teachers spending all that time rebuilding every year. So using a system like BlackBot, you can set your courses up and then you can roll that over. The problem is that when you get into using systems like BlackBot, some of the assignment features and the feedback features, they are well behind systems like Google Classroom, which were built in the cloud, built, I would say, feedback first and everything else later. And there are, they're integrated really, really well with uh, the G Suite. So all of those features in uh, Google Docs that people enjoy using are all there. And that's obviously owned by Google. And if you're using Microsoft, like OneDrive or Office 365, you get a similar experience. And that's owned by Microsoft. So it's not like BlackBot, PowerSchool can just go in and replicate all those features. So what they've done is they've partnered and they allow these integrations. Now, if you're asking, how can I get these integrations to work? That is a, that's coming next. So first video was the easiest thing in the world using the Google Drive integration. A lot of schools already have it. Um, it's very easy to install. The Google assignment integration, pretty easy to install, but there are a few things you need to know. So I'm gonna make a separate video about that, so don't worry. Right now, I just wanna show you how it works. And we're gonna do the teacher perspective and we're gonna do the student perspective. Now I'm using BlackBot, I'm using the EnSuite product. Um, I'm assuming you know how to make an assignment in BlackBot. If you don't, um, that's something that um, I'm not really covering here. Um, so BlackBot has great information about that. Feel free to, to uh, look that up. And if you do need a tutorial, you can email me and I'll make you one. All right, so I'm making an assignment as a teacher and I have put in all of the um, basic information, it's all fake. I added demo as my abbreviation because even though it's fake, it's going to show up in the gradebook and this is a live class. And I'm testing it with a live class and a fake student in a live class so I um, can have the best possible experience and also the best possible simulation. So I'm going to go down here and where it says associated learning tool, I'm going to put Google Assignments. You leave this alone, and um, I only have one section, so I'm going to say. All right, now I'm going to open this up as the teacher, and you'll see as the teacher it says launch Google Assignments. Now, the first time you do this, Google Assignments asks you for permission. After that, it's fine, but you do have to get permission. So here's the Google Assignments interface. All right, nothing is submitted yet. There's nothing for me to do. All right. Now let's swap over to the student view. Okay, I am back here at the student view. Um, you can see that here's the student's assignment, and this is normal within BlackBot. This is what students see. 
here's the assignment detail and you would have the resources and other information here. Now you have a new option, Google Assignments Launch, and I'm going to hit that. Again, the first time you do this, you have to link the data. I uh, am not showing that step. I don't like to show email addresses and other information if I can if I can avoid it. It's very easy. It asks you, do you want to link it? You hit OK, you hit link, and it's done. All it's really doing is allowing the student to access their Google Drive on your domain. There is an option when students link to choose a different account. Obviously, you want them to use their school account. Um, if you are running your G Suite with uh, private accounts, I would highly recommend against that. And if you're having some issues getting G Suite set up and that's why you're doing it, again, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help. So as a student, Here's my demo. This is not real, so hopefully the students in the class won't freak out when they wake up this morning and notice that I've posted another assignment. I'm going to hit Add Files, and uh, it opens my Google Drive as a student, and um, I'm going to attach this file, and then I'm going to hit Submit. So I've already done my work in Google Drive, I've already written my answers, etc. And uh, that would generally be the model I would recommend. You always want students to kind of separate their content from the system. So when you enter information directly into a system, like into like a box, like some type of content box, the student doesn't really have a copy of that. I mean, I guess they can get one, but they don't have a copy that they've written, checked, proofread, they're, maybe they're using a system to help them check for grammar. All of that would be more difficult in one of those content boxes. Also, when you ask Google Assignments to create content for you, that's fine. You can hit create content, it will save it to your drive, but you still are doing it on the fly with the assignment system open. The ideal workflow is that you get the assignment you're supposed to do. And then you use your Google Drive to arrange the documents, arrange the information, do your research, store it all in a folder for the course or the assignment or both, finish the work, and then upload your final copy or your final draft. That is a better workflow. Doing everything in just the assignment system or doing everything just in Google Classroom or doing everything just in the, like if you use Canvas, just in the Canvas like content box, that is gonna to lead to more problems. Any of these systems can have a problem. They can time out, your network can shut off, any number of things can happen, and then you lose all of your work. But if you're working in Google Drive or OneDrive and you have offline documents saved, or even if you don't, most of the time, you're still all right because the text is there in front of you. You could copy, paste it, and save it into another document. You're fine. Your work isn't gonna get lost. I have had students work like directly in a, a Google Classroom before, and they worked for like an hour or two, and then all of a sudden they didn't save. Doing it with a separated workflow makes a lot more sense. Okay, the student can unsubmit it if they wanna add something else or make a change, but the work is submitted. So now let's flip back over to the teacher side and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm back here on the teacher side to review uh, what the assignment submission looks like. And this is the first assignment I've taken, so Google is giving me some information. It's walking me through the options. Um, originality reports. I believe that these are going to be fully functional only under G Suite Enterprise. I have just completed the upgrade to G Suite Enterprise. It is not approved yet. I will be checking this out to see if it is as good as, better than, or worse than Turnitin. If it is similar to Turnitin and gets the job done, we probably would be looking at um, not continuing with Turnitin because most people are only writing originality reports and as you know, if you're not using Turnitin to manage your documents, this just makes a lot more sense and it's a lot easier. Also, um, I like how you can easily show to students that everything is gonna be checked right inside of Google. Um, there's not really any excuse. Once it's uploaded, it gets checked. All right, you can add rubrics. You can set a due date if you want to. 
But remember, a lot of this stuff is already set up in uh, BlackBots. You've already built all this in BlackBots, so you don't need a lot of these features. So I'm going to open the test students document. Um, they're, a, you know, a huge Star Trek fan. So it looks good to me. I'm going to give them 100 out of 100. Great work. So return is interesting, and I noticed this in Microsoft Classroom as well. Um, you're returning the work to the student, but it makes it sound like you're rejecting it. But you're not rejecting it. Um, you are simply just saying you know the grade's done. Now, once you're in here, though, you have comments that you can leave. So you can go through and annotate and mark up the work, which I really like. Um, you are basically in Google Docs. So if you want to highlight stuff, you know, you can do that. You've got all of those features. You can put links in, like, did you check this reference? You can, you can do that. Um, so you've got the overall feedback, but at the same time, you've got this document level feedback, which doesn't go to BlackBot, doesn't get saved anywhere except inside the document. But I think it's a really good way to provide quick feedback to students. And I do go back to uh, looking at the metadata studies of John Hattie and how important feedback is. And the big thing about feedback is it needs to be timely and it needs to be digestible and usable. So writing a, a large feedback paragraph is great, but if you can go through quickly as the teacher and just flag this up and uh, then send, you know, check feedback here or good job, but look at your feedback. You've been more efficient and the student can start working on those points um, one by one. Okay, we're back in the Google assignment view inside of BlackBod. This is the teacher view. Um, I've hidden the other students. I'm just going to show you the fake student here. You'll notice that I put in a grade on the Google assignment side of 100 out of 100. That translated back over here to 10 because the total uh, points available were 10. So that totally makes sense. Um, I've been using uh, flat grading. I have not tried this with uh, grade weighting. I think if you're doing uh, standard grade, weight, grade weighting with like three to five categories, it would be fine. If you're doing fractional grade weighting or doing something strange with your calculation, I would definitely test it and, and check it and make sure Google is, uh, when they're sent, when the information's being sent back, nothing is, is being messed up. But it seems to work pretty well. And um, again, the students can get their feedback in the Google assignment, but their actual data is updated back here. And this is what goes on the report card. This makes transcripts. And if you're thinking, oh, well, why is that important? I have a video that I will link at the, after this video is done, it will be linked so that you can learn all about school information systems and how they're different from learning management systems and how managing your data and grades is really, really important. And thinking that you can run your school off of something just like Google Classroom is a huge mistake. Until next time, and if you need any help, please reach out.